Welcome back to our top 10 countdown. Today, I'm not just your host Teresa, but I'm your art theory teacher as we'll be discussing the top 10 mysterious works of art made by early humans. Let's start. Number 10 is Little Lion Man. Not the painfully catchy song either, but rather a mammoth tusk carving dating back over 40,000 years, meaning it was created in the Ice Age. Standing at 12.2 inches tall, it depicts a humanoid body with the head of a lion standing square and straight backed on two legs. The sculpture was carved from ivory, which was prominent in this period. Tools were different, however and scientists determined that this was actually carved out of simple flint scraping techniques. Using the same style of tools from the Ice Age, scientific experiments showed that this would have taken over 400 hours to complete. These are the same kind of tools found with other small sculptures in the same vicinity of the cave Lion Man was found in, in 1939 South Germany. These tools and animal bones found indicated people lived in those caves, but the Lion Man cave is different. Facing north, its passages see no sunlight, making it frigid, desolate, and unlivable. There's considerably less human debris found in it in any cave site found nearby, implying it was only occasionally used, perhaps as a place people would come together around a fire for meetings of importance, storytelling, rituals, who knows. Lion Man was found carefully standing in an inner chamber alongside perforated arctic fox teeth and reindeer antlers. The story of his significance is lost to us, and what we can only speculate the Lion Man is perhaps maybe a creation story, a hero, a deity, we'll never know. Number 9 is the Amazon Ice Age canvas. It's 8 miles long and climbs upwards along the mountainside deep in the Colombian Amazon. This canvas depicts mastodons, the giant sloth, and many other beasts that didn't live to see a modern era. Painted on inexplicably by hand all the way up. It's truly a sight to behold. It's believed that these paintings were the earliest peoples of western Amazonia towards the end of the last ice age, about 12,600 years ago. At the base of the canvas are three rock shelters. When excavated, they revealed that they may be some of the earliest human occupied sites in the entire Amazon, meaning this painting offers us insight into early hunter gatherers of the region. Because Amazon used to be a drastically different environment, we already know that there are many animals that we never got to see emerge from these lands. But Having them documented for us by those who did see them? Well, it's incredible. Identified painted creatures include deer, alligators, bats, monkeys, and horses. We still don't know how they managed to climb as high as they did to paint when Amazonians settled, their impact on land, or even how long these Amazonians were here. But the Last Journey project aims to answer these questions for us as they continue to analyze. Number 8 is the Agawa Rock and the little known lore of the giant lynx. J.E.H. McDonald of the Group of Seven spoke of Agawa Canyon as the original original site of the Garden of Eden for its beauty and grandeur. Considered the most important and mysterious art piece of Canada, the granite face of a 15 story high cliff depicts the terrifying beast that reportedly tormented the Ojibwe and Anishinaabe people for hundreds of thousands of years. It's known as the Great Lynx, as its true name is one that should never be spoken out loud. Red ochre draws up feline paws and legs, the dragon like body is adorned with sharp spines along its back and tail, and while it may not have eyes in this depiction, make no mistake that this creature looks back down on you. There are over a hundred other images at Agawa Rock, a sacred lakeside site located in Lake Superior Provincial Park, possibly over a millennia old. Nobody knows for sure what they mean and why they were placed there. Seeing as visiting the artwork requires venturing out onto a rocky ledge where a sign warns that death and injury have occurred when highly unpredictable waves have washed visitors off the rock ledge while viewing the pictographs, Eli, a Bashawana First Nations elder and knowledge keeper whose ancestors made these paintings, recommend observing the Anishinaabe custom of offering tobacco and asking for permission from spirits who watch over the area to view the pictographs, should you visit them. After all, the Great Lynx is a sinister spirit of swift waves and troubled waters, and those who show no respect may be swept to their ultimate demise. Number 7 is an artifact reburied. And yes, it is for disappointing reasons, but we'll get to those in a moment. Called the Konoko Stone, it's carved full of indentations, geometric spirals, and other mysterious patterns that seem to have no inherent translation or meaning to us in modern times. However, the art form is recognized as a cup and ring carvings from bronze era, and the Konoko stone is considered the finest example to date, dating back over 5,000 years. First discovered in 1887 Scotland, the stone is 42 by 26 feet on farmland. This stone is recognized to be of national importance and a scheduled monument. This is due to the particular carvings of two pairs of footprints that only have four toes and pre-Christian cross in an oval. Yet, for the last 50 
50 years, it's flayed buried several feet of earth and vegetation over top in a sense of desperate attempts to protect it from vandalism. During the 60s, the Canoco Stone was repeatedly damaged by vandals, so in 64, the Glasgow University archaeologists recommended it be buried to protect it. To this day, it remains under the earth. However, there is consideration to unbury it once more and garner the correct security for curious onlookers to finally see it. Eastern Arctic petroglyphs are number six in the countdown. The first mystery of these petroglyphs is their location. While they reside on the coast of the Inuit region in Nunavik, they are a highly guarded secret. These 165 plus petroglyphs are protected from the public and have been submitted to UNESCO for the new World Heritage Site consideration. After hearing what happened to number eight, sadly this does make sense. They are highly stylized human faces in rounded, ovular, square or triangular shapes with horns donning the heads, all carved on soapstone banks from the Dorset era and appear to be the only area of Dorset transposed soapstones in a large scale, as they usually only find small bone, horn, ivory artifacts. The Dorset people lived along the coast of Nunavik for 2,000 to 1,000 years ago and disappeared before the arrival of the Sule Inuit, the ancestors of modern Inuit inhabiting the area approximately 800 years ago. The carvings, which have baffled archaeologists since their discovery in the early 1960s, range from a few centimeters in height to more than 30 centimeters, and scientists have been unable to truly date the carvings. Scientists do speculate that the decline in the Dorset people was triggered by a sudden warming of the climate in the Arctic around the 10th century. The dramatic change precipitated their spiritual beliefs and artistic expression, leading to the creation of breathtaking symbols carved into the earth that are not made for us to understand, but rather for something else. Number 5 takes us on a Roman getaway to the Villa of Mysteries. Cults are actually incorporated into the Roman Empire as a supplement for their varying religious customs. Always practicing in private despite their widespread acceptance, these cult meetings were only ever held in private ceremonies and temples. The secrecy of their organization's congregations unfortunately leave much of these ancient cults to be lost to time. But while paintings of the Villa of Mysteries in Pompeii give insight as they were preserved by the volcanic ash of the 79 AD eruption, they allow us to peek into one group's practices and ideals, filling in knowledge gaps for archaeologists and historians alike. In the hall, a large continuous mural covers three walls as one of the most preserved ancient paintings of all times. The scene is linked with Dionysus, who appears on the central wall with his wife. Makes sense as the villa also did include a wine production room as well. To this date, we know incredibly little of ancient cults, but from this mural depiction, it seems like there's a bit of raunchy partying going on. Back over to Murica for number four as the Sago Canyon Rock Art. This canyon is essentially an outdoor gallery with paintings and carvings believed to have taken place a whopping 8,000 years of work. The first sign of human habitations are archaic in 6000 BC, but the subsequent tribes in the decades to come also left their symbol tree and stories on cliff walls. Researcher Polly Schaffsma believes that much of these symbols correlate with ritual activities pointing to the spirit figures often shown in snake forms and torsos, sometimes incorporating water and life-giving symbolatry. Animal figure motifs are considered evidence of spiritual tradition and lures. What really grabs attention are over 80 disturbing life-size figures. Their eyes are either hollowed out or simply not there and many are lacking their arms and legs with triangular heads. Naturally, people jump to aliens, saying these are depictions that may be evidence of their visitation. Scholars maintain the strange beings represent ritual visions produced in trance-like states. There is no further explanation for the figures and many other story-like depictions on these walls as researchers seem to have hit a literal stone wall in analyzing their abilities. So the mystery continues. Number three in the countdown is the Swaga Game Reserve Rock Art. In June 2018, Polish archaeologists spotted what's now called the Machahi Four Rock Shelter Site, while on the game reserve located in central Tanzania. This rock art seems to belong to an ancient indigenous group, the Sandawe, who have existed for nearly 90,000 years and still remain in southeast Africa to this day. While one of the mysteries of this piece is its age, something scientists are struggling to pinpoint due to degradation from the exposure, it's concluded that the rock art does come from the hunter-gatherer period. Scientists also determined that there are two paintings on the stone and that the painters of the second intentionally respected the existing drawing, as they didn't overlay the new image on it, but rather incorporated it into the new scene. The scene depicts domestic cattle, humans, and giraffes, but most importantly is a scene centered around three figures featuring strange heads. These skulls have the same central dip in the profile of a buffalo head, where the two horns curve outward away from the head with downturned ears. Present day descendant Sadaway clan members unfortunately cannot, or understandably will not, explain the amorphophized figures, and so it's left to researchers to find some clarity in what this art could mean. And let's enter the Alabama Caves Dark Zone for
for number two. A two mile cave that's home to many passages, sediment deposits, deep pools and waterfalls, but also incredible art findings. This cave art was among the largest found in North America, deep in the convoluted dark zone where natural light could not reach. The ceiling of this cave is incredibly low, so when Alan Kressler came across this art for the first time in 1998, it was while he was stooped over. This low ceiling resulted in the usage of 3D technology, which was used to uncover an acres worth of paintings that were not visible initially. There are humans adorned in native regalia, coiled snakes, swooping birds, and even a 10 foot long serpent winding its way across the expanse. Some incorporate the features of the ceiling into their designs, such as a serpent that appears to emerge from a natural fissure. To accomplish this, the artists were likely laying on their backs, so unlike with the other rock art which is out in the open, the artists inside the chamber could not just step away and look at their work in progress from a distance to make edits, corrections, or even map placements. They simply had an idea as to what to do and moved around whilst they worked. Charred fragments of river cane suggest the artwork could have been a team effort with someone holding a torch while the artists were. Researchers estimated that the art dates between 500 AD and 1000 AD, known as the hunter gatherers era. 89 other cave art sites have been identified in southeastern North America. The earliest is nearly 7,000 years old. All are deeply protected to avoid vandals. At number one are Neanderthals and the world's oldest cave creations. This is the first art discovery dated to the time of Neanderthals, said to have been created 115,000 years ago. This predates the arrival of the modern human to Europe. In three known caves across Spain, dozens of wall paintings were found, and in one southeastern cave, perforated seashell beads and pigments were found dating back 115,000 years. These beads are the oldest personal ornament found in the world to this date, even predating similar ones in African continents by 20 to 40,000 years. Despite the oafy grunt representation of a Neanderthal, the more we discover and also accomplish scientifically allows us to further and further our insight and it turns out they're very similar cognitively to humans. This could mean that the findings date back to the common ancestor of both parties, some 500,000 years ago. Some are very reluctant to believe this, as early European art didn't flourish until the major wave of modern homo sapiens arrived on the continent about 40 to 50,000 years ago. The only way to prove that Neanderthals were artists is by finding the art in Europe made before or during that time period. No luck yet. And that has been our countdown for today. Please remember to always respect the integrity of ancient artifacts and their sites. Never vandalize or disrespect the requests of people who honor these pieces as part of our cultures and pasts. Please be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below which one you'd love to see in person. I'll see you next time.